Hi, everybody. Dave here. Our CyberWire podcast team is taking a well-earned break for the holidays, but don't fret. We'll be back January 2nd with all new episodes of our show. In the meantime, we're running extended versions of some of our favorite interviews from 2019. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to all of you. Stay with us. My guest today is Phil Quaid. He's the Chief Information Security Officer at Fortinet and author of the recently published book, The Digital Big Bang. The book features insights from industry security leaders from both the public and private sectors, revealing the connections between fundamental and scientific principles and cybersecurity best practices to address today's biggest security challenges. The Digital Big Bang is part how-to, part call to arms, and provides an insider's tour of the past, present, and rapidly intensifying imperatives of 21st century data protection. But first, a message from our sponsors, McAfee. Ideas don't come for free. Budgets are begged for, long hours are required, the months, maybe even years of research, the sheer human effort of it all, the changes, the revisions, the reworks, the results. The adaptation, the innovation, the collaboration all lead to the final moment when it pays off. And it's perfect. Your company's work. As long as it's not compromised. From device to cloud, McAfee harnesses the power of one billion threat sensors to design security that moves beyond intelligence to insight. So you can move beyond optimizing security products to optimizing your security posture. And not just react to threats, but remediate threats that matter. Intelligence lets you respond to your environment. Insights empower you to change it. McAfee, the device-to-cloud cybersecurity company. To learn more, go to mcafee.com slash insights. That's mcafee.com slash insights. And we thank McAfee for sponsoring our show. The cosmic Big Bang of, you know, 14 billion years ago, which, uh, which launched our universe, created, uh, we ultimately discovered that there are some fundamental elements and forces within it, which we ultimately characterized in some sciences called you know, physics and chemistry. And humans really started to hit their groove development-wise when we learned those sciences and starting obeying those laws and understanding the elements that govern them. I look at the past 40, 50 years, and I think it's a, it's a great analogy. I think we're in the midst of a digital Big Bang. There's a massive amount of information just exploding from our culture. We need to understand what are the fundamental forces, the fundamental elements within this digital universe, and we need to identify the core sciences that govern those digital Big Bang forces and put them to use and then start flourishing in our digital universe. You start off the book, even in your introduction, you cover... Uh, what we got right and what we got wrong. What are you talking about there? Yeah, so so let's start with um, the precursor, which is the, the fundamental elements, which is, you know, in, in the case of the, the universe Big Bang, cosmic Big Bang, it's things like gravity, matter, energy, time, things like that. Well, in the digital Big Bang, the fundamental elements of which all cybersecurity needs to be based around, those are things like speed and connectivity, right? So when the internet was, quote, created 40, 50 years ago, it was about connecting more people than ever imagined and doing so at speeds, higher speeds ever imagined. So if you're going to create cybersecurity solutions, you better create those solutions based around those fundamental elements of cyberspace, which is doing things as fast as possible and doing so in an integrated way since the Internet is, is fundamentally an integration function. But back specifically to your question, you asked, you know, what are the things that we we kind of got wrong collectively when the internet was uh, first started up a number, few decades ago, several decades ago. One of those things was authentication. The original internet was conceived mostly as a collection of colleagues who knew each other. So personal authentication and data authentication wasn't that important. We've been paying the price for that for a really, really long time. Almost everything on the internet today is, all the flaws of the internet today are based on lack of trustworthy uh, authentication of people, of machines, of information. So that first section of the book that you asked about talks about the, the elementary shortfalls that we just never got right from the beginning. A few that me and my colleagues listed were uh, authentication, patching, and training. 
One of the sections of the book deals with uh, fundamental strategies. Uh, you call it proven strategies that don't let us down. One of them is an old favorite, especially from the place I used to work for. So I went, before coming to Fortinet, I spent about 30 years in the intelligence and national security community. And in those jobs, we spent a whole lot of time getting cryptography right, becoming masters of cryptography. And mm -hmm. cryptography, of course, is a means to provide some really strong mathematical principles to ensure that information is kept private and to ensure information isn't changed and information is authenticated. And it turns out that there, that's, uh, that's one of the three fundamental strategies that uh, me and my colleagues write about, write about in the Digital Big Bang as things that absolutely need to be leveraged from the beginning. Uh, cryptography, access control, and segmentation. Uh, if I could, I'd like to just say a couple words about segmentation. Um, it's one of the earliest of cybersecurity strategies. And some people may mistakenly think that uh, early or age of that strategy means it's become less important. I, I personally think the opposite's, uh, the opposite's true, that segmentation has become the primary cybersecurity strategy of our day, right? 10, 15 years ago, the preeminent strategy was about creating a big border around our networks, either a physical or a logical one, and then doing some active defense at that boundary around our networks. But we all know that those boundaries have disappeared because of things like wireless and mobility. And so what we need to do now really, really well is segmenting off our assets so we can avoid breaches, so we can minimize their scope, and then we can recover from them quickly. So segmentation uh, is is really, really important to get right. So that's why we call it one of the fundamental strategies. You know, I, I can't help thinking, uh, given your title about um, the, the notion of the cosmic calendar, which is something that I think Carl Sagan popularized back when he did his, his original uh, Cosmos book and TV series, which was this notion that if you stretched out time across a calendar and you started with the Big Bang on, you, you said that was January 1st, that you know it's only the last moments of the last day of that cosmic year that humans show up in the course of evolution. I'm curious, uh, where do you suppose we are on a, on a cyber cosmic calendar? How, how far along are we in the, the cosmic evolutionary uh, scale? Uh, love the questions. I, I, I think that we're in the, uh, the pre-scientific age of the digital Big Bang. So, so let me just, as you just did, just go back in history just a little bit. Back in the Middle Ages, we, we invented explanations that weren't based on science. And we, uh, we feared them. It often paralyzed us. And it wasn't until we started, I'll say, admitting our ignorance that we, in fact, didn't know a lot about the world that we ultimately started to really flourish as, as a culture. That's when we started the age of exploration, right? At the time, uh, ocean explorers were worried about falling off the edge of the world. You know, mm. uh, today, astronomers are looking at the edge of the universe. What a fantastic amount of um, advancement we've made as humans just in the past, you know, a few hundred years or so. Now, in cybersecurity, we're starting to uh, worry about the cyber edge, right? That the edge is about to get a whole lot more interesting to those doing cybersecurity. It used to be the desktop then the laptop, then the tablet, then the smartphone. But as we all know, the new definition of the edge is going to be the explosion of devices that, that sit out there in the physical domain. I call it the sci-fi, cyber-physical integration. These are the IoT devices that are instrumenting everything from our coffee makers to our health monitors to our automobiles. So the edge in cybersecurity uh, has its own meaning, and we're just about to start exploring that edge. So to answer your question, I think that we're, um, we're just exploring, uh, entering the scientific age of cybersecurity, and which is why this book, The Digital Big Bang, advocates treating cybersecurity like a science. Let's admit what we don't know. Let's observe what works well and why, and rigorously and methodically adopt the things that work well and then keep building on the shoulders of those successes. So it's trying to inspire people to uh, recognize their moment we're in. 90% of all data has been invented uh, just in the past few years. We're in the midst of a digital big bang. That's both a huge opportunity and a responsibility for us to you know, get, set the course for you know, a, a bright future. So it's designed to be a little bit uh, inspiration and a little bit call for a little bit perspiration. You know, I, I suppose uh, I, I can't help wondering. Uh, you know, do, is is it in our best interest to look uh, look to the sky for that uh, cybersecurity version of of an asteroid? You know, for a, some sort of extinction event. It's a, is that something we need to be mindful of as well? Yeah, great analogy. I wish I'd worked that one into the book. 
there are some uh, there are some fear mongers out there that uh, say that things like uh, AI is going to be the be our doom, or even that uh, the adversary is going to shut down quote the grid. Um, I think both of those are a little bit too much um, fear mongering. Meaning, you know, AI is not a bad thing or a good thing on its own. It's just a technology. People need to how to need to know how to best leverage that technology and use it for good. So I don't see that as an asteroid. Um, now, the threat's a little bit one where we need to keep our eye on. As, as, as you know, right, the, we Earthlings look out into uh, near space for evidence that a future asteroid, an asteroid is going to hit us in the future. I think we need to do the same about threats, right? I'm not so worried about our entire power grid going down. Our electric grid is uh, much more better segmented than most people understand and pretty resilient. Uh, but we do, know, do need to understand what nation states aspire to do to us, both on the electric grid and our other critical infrastructure. So to answer your question, I do think that the uh, asteroid analogy is a pretty good one. And I think that uh, we need to do a, a better job or keep our eye on those asteroids uh, figuratively to protect our critical infrastructures. That's Phil Quaid from Fortinet. His book is The Digital Big Bang. Our thanks to McAfee for sponsoring our program. Visit McAfee.com slash insights and find out why McAfee is the device-to-cloud cybersecurity company. For everyone here at the CyberWire, I'm Dave Bittner. Thanks for listening.